In this lecture, we're gonna talk about how to use your website's navigational structure to start thinking about how you wanna build out your Google Ads campaign structure. Remember in the last lecture, we spoke about the differences between campaigns and accounts and ad groups, and it's important that certain types of things are gonna be segmented out at the campaign level. Here we are at poppin.com. This is a website which we'll use as a template and imagine we're, we're building out a campaign, a Google Ads search campaign for Poppin and we don't know where to start, right? They sell lots of different uh, types of office furniture and supplies and different categories and all sorts of things. And we wanna figure out how to separate out our campaigns. So let's go over and take a look at how they look at their navigation. So I'm gonna hover over furniture. So I see different categories. There's desks and benching, adjustable height desks, office chairs, stools, so on and so forth. Under office supplies, I see the same thing. Uh, desk organization, notebooks, planners, corporate branding, design services, all sorts of things that we wanna do. Now, the first thing to realize is that you're not always gonna start off advertising all your services and all your products. This is a mistake I see lots and lots of people making. So you wanna start off thinking about the core group of services that either your best sellers, they are the most important services, they're the services that you have the highest margins on, um, and start with that group of products, product categories, or services. You could also consider loss leaders. Loss leaders are when you have a certain product that might not be profitable, but you're willing to either break even or take a little bit of a loss because you know that this service ends up generating sales for a follow-up service or a certain product or a certain product category, like desk accessories. Um, if they're bought, they might not generate profit on that first initial sale, but you know from your own data that typically those people will come, by, come back and buy more later on. In this case, there's two different ways that are obvious to me that you could start off building out these campaigns. One is I could, I could have my campaign set up at the top level categories of this navigation. So I can have a campaign for furniture, a campaign for office supplies, a campaign for corporate branding, and a campaign for design services. My ad groups would then potentially be the subcategories of that primary navigation. So I'd have an, under my furniture campaign, I might have a, um, an ad group for desks and benching, an ad group for adjustable height desks, and if I click into adjustable height desks in my ad group, I'll see that I have um, these products and these product pages. You wanna also think about what page you wanna send that traffic to. So you don't wanna to be too broad, and you also don't wanna to be too specific. So if I have adjustable height desks and somebody's searching for adjustable height desks, standing desks, so far and so on and so forth, I think that this would be, this page that we're on now, I think would be a good place to send that traffic to. I could potentially turn any of these subcategories into campaigns as well. So I might have a campaign for desks and benching, or rather, let's say we were in the previous example, I might have a campaign for adjustable height desks and then have an ad group for benching desks, desk risers, L-shaped desks, and single desks. The point is that I'm using my navigational structure on my website to inform my decisions about how I wanna break out my campaigns in Google Ads, and it makes a lot of sense. Not only is it just a place to get good ideas, your navigation is usually structured, well, it is structured in a way that there are pages, there's information structured in a certain way. How your navigation is structured is also how your information is structured. So again, there's two ways I would potentially break it out up here. I would have a top-level campaign for furniture um, with ad groups below, ad groups for file cabinets, ad groups for tables, ad groups for long seating, so on and so forth. Um, I, might have an ad, I might have a campaign for corporate branding and then an ad group for branded sets, notebooks, pens, desktop organization, new arrivals. But again, it's tricky because let's say I were to click into pens. There's ballpoint pens, there's gel ink, there's rollerball. So let's say somebody's searching for uh, rollerball uh, branded pens or so on and so forth. This gets into a big argument that a lot of people have and I, I'm happy to sort of settle it right now about how specific a page you want to send traffic to. So here's a good example that we just landed on with pens. Say somebody searches for corporate pens or corporate ballpoint pens, right? I could send them to this page that we're on now that just shows all pens and then they would have to filter themselves into ballpoint or I could literally click ballpoint and take this URL and then I could have an ad group for ballpoint uh, corporate pens. I think it would be a big mistake to drill down to this level of specificity. There's a concept in photography um, and if you're, any of you are professional photographers, don't hold me totally accountable for understanding this concept fully, or maybe I'm making a little bit of a stretch or bad application, but this concept called closure. People, it, a, a photograph shouldn't give all the information about the scene. There should be a little bit left for the user to work, or the viewer rather, to work to figure out what is all the, what's really the peripheral information contained in this, in this shot. And it's a very powerful concept because that closure and, and having 
enough information where I don't need to work too hard to understand what's going on in the scene, but not having all the information where my brain on my own could fill in the missing pieces, it gives a person a sense of ownership of, of his perception. People are the same way when they're shopping for products. If I'm searching for something, I want to be able to find it myself. I don't want to have to be drudging through a poorly designed site or a suboptimal layout. That's painful and that's going to alienate your visitors. It's going to decrease your conversion rate. But to an extent, you don't need to be totally hyper specific. So if I'm looking for gel ink corporate branded pens, you don't need to send me to a page that just has a gel ink corporate branded pen on it. You could send me to a page that talks about your branded pens and then I could be more than happy to easily look at the conventional filter and click gel ink. In fact, I feel better about that. That's a very deep psycholo psychological concept at play called closure where I'm actually deciding what I want. Meaning, I, it's like going to a restaurant and the waiter bringing you just one specific thing. I liked. I like to look at a menu of things. I like to choose my own item. I like to evaluate my options and then decide. Even if, even if I did search, you might say that's not a good example because in, in the case of the waiter, how should the waiter know what you want? In this case, you specifically asked for gel rollerball brand of pens. But yet, still, users on the internet and users on websites, st and this is something which has been researched over and over again. When companies send users to these very uh, minimal, landing pages that have very little information and very little content, users will typically go and try to find the home page and then navigate their way down to the product or service or information that they're looking for. What I'm saying is that I think that the campaign structure here, it would be appropriate to have, um, let's say corporate branding at the top as a campaign and then just pens as an ad group and users can then find whether they want gel ink ballpoint or rollerball pens. Let's take briefly another look at another client, the International Culinary Center. Client of ours, again, um, really fun, incredible client, really dynamic campaigns, exciting stuff, challenging, challenging account. But we see here, right away I get some ideas for how I would structure out a Google Ads account. They have a New York campus, they have a California campus, but wow, look at so many different things they have. They have a New York campus and they have professional culinary arts, professional pastry and baking, professional wine, continue, continuing education, all different sorts of, all different sorts of uh, classes and courses that they offer. They offer an under continuing education, they have all these different um, culinary entrepreneurship, uh, food styling for media, right? There's tons of programs. What we've actually done is built out quite a monstrous account where we have lots of search campaigns that are structured for New York, lots of search campaigns that are structured for California, not just one, but even within New York and California, we have inside Manhattan, right? Right around Soho, which is where their main flagship campus is, we have bids more aggressive. Then expanding out radius targeting to the tri-state area, bids a little bit less aggressive. Then, um, you know, East Coast world, East Coast nationwide, even less aggressive than that and separate campaigns within those location tiers for all the different programs. Now, you also have to recognize that certain programs represent different levels of value to the client. Um, and certain service, and if you're in a service business or you're in a product business, you have the same thing. Every product you offer, every service you offer will have different levels of value to you, whether it regards, whether it's your profit margin is higher or lower or some other factor. You could also build out campaigns based on the value and the aggressiveness you want to bid for a specific product or service. And that's something that we've done for this account as well. The more expensive programs that generate more revenue for the client, we have in separate campaigns and they're sort of, they're sort of, it's sort of a little bit like an algorithm. The closer you are to the campus, you have an aggressive, more aggressive bid. And the higher revenue generating program you're searching for, the more aggressive the bid. So a searcher that's closest to the flagship location will have a very high bid, but even a higher bid if that person is also searching for a program that generates a large amount of revenue for the client. This is one of the hardest things and one of the most overwhelming things about Google Ads, figuring out how to structure an account. I deal with this every single day. We have lots of clients. I've managed hundreds of campaigns. I've built hundreds of accounts. And I'm not saying this to brag. I'm just saying that I've recognized that this is one of the hardest things. And now that you have a good understanding of a Google Ads account hierarchy, you understand how to go to your website, take a look at your information architecture, and apply that to a strategy for building out campaigns, you're in a very good place to pick a campaign for your very first campaign that we're building now. Um, and in the next lecture, we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna choose from Poppin what our first campaign is going to be. We're gonna go and start building that campaign, going through each setting, and we're gonna learn a ton. I look forward to seeing you guys very soon. I hope so far things are, are useful and you're sort of getting a really 
clear fundamental sense of Google Ads. I know this is not advanced stuff, but you have no idea how valuable understanding the fundamentals are in being able to build on the more advanced topics as you go along. Trust me, uh, just bear with me, uh, give me some faith. I guarantee you, you'll be very, very happy and pleased that you, uh, you stuck with it through some of the maybe the more boring stuff, um, but hopefully we're keeping this very, very interesting as we go along. I will see you guys very shortly in the very next lecture.